I'm a clinical neuropsychologist um, and specializing mostly in memory loss in older adults. I'm not, I haven't been historically very involved as an activist or a public health advocate. And, um, but this pandemic really awakened, awakened something within me, which was a real concern for uh, first our nation and then for, for what is happening in our region. And really there, there has been kind of, I've been enraged by the treatment of teachers um, and just watching this virus um, take off and spread in the very ways that some of, the, some of our best minds in epidemiology, infectious diseases, virology, everything that's been predicted has basically taken place and we're seeing it unfold. Uh, I think we are, you know, getting closer to being in a position where we can bring more kids back to schools. I think this is the worst time since the pandemic started. We are really at a, a crescendo at this point. And many uh, scientists studying COVID-19 and studying the transmission of this virus are suggesting that March is going to be particularly hard uh, because of this new variant, the B117 variant, that is, that many studies now have shown 50% more infectious and particularly in, in children and adolescents. And at the same time, Unfortunately, we haven't been able to keep up with vaccinations. Like what I mean by that is vaccinations haven't really kept pace with this new variant and other variants that, that are out there, including now we have the South African variant here. So I think there's just a lot of concern about what is really happening and, and really the virulence and the infectivity profile of what is really a crafty virus. And then you think about these teachers in these classrooms, small classrooms, many have very poor ventilation and, you know, it, 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 they have 20 kids or so in a classroom. We know, we've seen it play out, that kids can't effectively stay masked. They cohort, they get close together. These, we know that this virus really floats in the air like smoke and that you can put plexiglass and you can do all of this, but really this is a difficult virus to contend with in a classroom setting. Um, and so sure enough, we, we've been looking at the data. I can speak for San Diego. We've been looking at it really closely. And we see that from the beginning of the pandemic, if you look at kids, you know, eight, basically ages what, zero to 19, we've had 40,000 kids and adolescents become infected that we know of, right? Because testing has not been mandatory. 40,000 folks of the, the kids and adolescents have been infected since the start of the pandemic. And what's really, I think, alarming is 50% of those infections have occurred in the last 50 days. At the same time, we're looking at data showing very compellingly that 45% of all hospitalizations due to COVID in children and adolescents have occurred in the last two months. It's not to say that things aren't looking a little better, that we're trending down and, you know, th we have hope here. There's optimism. This vaccine, it's fantastic, right? Uh, but we're not there yet. And it's weird to me to hear Newsom say in November, our case rates are too high. Uh, we've got to get teachers vaccinated. We cannot open schools. Well, now the case rates are far higher than they were then, and the tune has, has very much changed. And so I am very frustrated by what I think has become a politicized public health problem where teachers have been attacked and have been made kind of a scapegoat in this when really it started with our national response in the first place, not being effective and really allowing a breeding ground across our nation for this particular virus. And I will lastly say, I know I've taken a lot of time and I'm people that know me here know I, I can rattle on, but you don't know, you don't have data. We don't know, it's disingenuous to say that this virus only spreads in homes or at parties or in restaurants. Um, we are not, there is no mandated testing in schools, what we call surveillance testing, where you would test kids, for example, every week and you'd have a sense of what is community, what are the rates? And, and, and if we're not doing that, then we have no idea what the spread looks like in schools. And why this is even a bigger problem than that is the majority of kids have no symptoms. They're sick, they're infected, they're infectious, but they have no symptoms. And so they're coming home with the virus, they're spreading it, and we have seen coincidentally with these increased rates, they seem to track with 
when schools opened here in early January. Uh, so that's just what I want to say is for schools that reopen, they need to have all the mitigation in place, all the safety, uh, everything that they can do to protect the, the teachers, but also the kids and the families at home, the communities at large. And you need to do it when case rates are low. And we've seen across the U.S. that when case rates are high, it is not successful. These schools do not open successfully. And what happens is they open and close, open and close, or whole classes are quarantining. And that is not a stable environment for our kids. So um, that I think that is really important to consider, not only infectivity, uh, health of our, of our teachers, uh, kids and staff, and of course the community, but we want more stability. And to say that teachers aren't teaching is wrong. They're working harder than ever. And while it's not ideal, um, it's better than the alternative at this time.